Welcome to another episode of The Local Dive. This is Slightly Congested, Alex Scott, joined by Dean and Sarah, Ashlyn Portero. Hello. And the biceps are back, baby. Let's Welcome back, go. Jacob. Thank you, thank you. Long time, no Jacob. We're glad he's <laughs> back. Um, well, we're uh, taking a little bit of a, of a break from the Doctrines of Grace series that we've been working through, and uh, we're going to talk today all about denominations and why we are a part of the Southern Baptist Convention, and so that, uh, you know, shouldn't be a controversial topic at all. Um, maybe it help. is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we do that, in the deep dive, uh, a couple shallow end topics. Maybe we'll, we'll start with this one. If you weren't a Southern Baptist, what would you be? Are we saying that? So <laughs> this this has to mean that like you don't think baptism matters or something? Right? I guess there, there that? clearly, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Well, I definitely wouldn't be non-denominational. I'm not a big fan of non-denomination uh, if, in terms of the practice of it. I love my non-denominational friends, but mm-hmm. I don't love the practice of it because I think you can do a whole lot more together than you can apart. So I'm a big believer in denominations. I think denominations bring churches together. That's undeniable. They bring churches together, right? That's still their function. Um, so I, so if that, <laughs> with the caveat of I think baptism matters a lot, but to answer the question, I would definitely like a million percent be PCA. Which is? The Presbyterian Church of America. Not to be confused with the Presbyterian Church USA, which like is extremely theologically to the left. Yes. I, w- I would not send um, one of my pets there. So you'd essentially be what you are now, except sprinkle babies. Yeah. <laughs> I feel Basically. Like then I feel like your love for animals has grown <laughs> over, the, over the last couple of years. That warms my heart to I know, hear. looking out for them. Yeah. I think it was the guinea pigs we got. Wow. <laughs> that was the yeah, I sent you over the Yeah, because yeah. before it would have been like, pets don't have souls. It doesn't matter. They can right, go anywhere. Right, right. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm so, edified by that. So PCA, I mean, the influence in my life, like my Uncle Richard um, gave me R.C. Sproul's The Holiness of God, mm-hmm. you know, when I was in high school. Uh, that was formative for me. He also, when I was in college, would send me every single, because I like, truly every single cassette tape sermon of a guy named Skip Ryan, who was a pastor of Park City's Presbyterian in Dallas. Um, he was, I think, the chancellor of, um, I think, Westminster's uh, Dallas campus. I think it's called Redeemer now. I'm not exactly sure. It was a while ago. And he was um, the pastor also of Trinity Presbyterian in Charlottesville, amongst other things. And he was a, a, he's a very good friend of my uncle. I, I don't believe he's in ministry right now. Um, but some of the best sermons I've ever heard in my entire life that as a young person wanting to go to ministry really taught me what biblical theology was. It was a lot of the teachings I'd had because in some like kind of traditional Baptist circles, like traditional list kind of Baptist circles, mm-hmm. they're not very strong on biblical theology. Uh, they're really strong on like, you know, evangelistic preaching and things such as that. But like in terms of how the whole Bible fits together, thankfully that's not the case anymore because of like the, our seminaries are so focused on that area and so strong there. But I just didn't really know what biblical theology was. I didn't learn that at Liberty. I mean, it was, it was kind of like isolated texts that were kind of moralistic or about the end times or whatever it might be. And so Skip's sermons were probably the most formative thing for me in learning how to understand and to preach the Bible. And he was PCA. So then you add on to that, like Sinclair Ferguson and Derek Thomas, um, a, a, a peer of mine, Nick Botzik today. Mm-hmm. Look at Duncan. Oh my gosh, how can I forget him? He's the Pope, right? I mean, like he's incredible. Like Keller. To, like Ke- gosh, Keller. <laughs> <laughs> so, D. Young. Yeah. So in other words, like every influence in my life theologically outside of like Al Mohler <laughs> is PCA. <laughs> yeah. So who, who you are now baptizing children? Ashlyn? I feel like I could get down with the Anglicans, uh, uh. but it would have to be, it would have to be like a very narrow sect of the Anglicans because like it would need to be, you know, theologically conservative um, but also, you know, like I don't believe in transubstantiation and, so, you know, like that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, it would have to be a particular kind of Anglican, but I could totally, I think I could, you know, in, like in the context of this, like just kind of being funny, like what I tend to. You'd um, be fine with some, some incense swinging down. Yeah, the, you, know. you know, maybe. <laughs> a, a J.I. Packer Anglican. Yeah, that's yeah, a great, a, a John that's a great Stott, way to put A John it. Stott Anglican. Yes. Some very high church. Yes, I uh, love some John Stott. Um. Yeah, I could very ordered liturgy. Yeah, I I that appeals to me. So yeah. I mean, in terms of like basically all, you know, my personal preferences and, you know, and even like some of like what I like to read um, you know, tends to veer tends to veer that way. Well, I mean, everything theologically in my life seems to go back to my Uncle Richard, <laughs> which I'm very <laughs> thankful for. Gosh, holy cow. Now I think about it. Um, so I did an internship at an Anglican church. With John Yates, that was fantastic. I mean, that'd be the kind of Anglican church, like, sign me up, you know, if I if I agree with them on, I just think baptism is really important for church membership, but yeah. 
um, that was just fantastic. I mean, serious about the Bible, serious about culture, and you know, and, and something about that we miss. I think we can easily miss out on is kind of holding to like the traditions of the historic church with some of the liturgies and some of um, things, things which we which we do practice things like responsive readings here and. Uh, things such as that, but it's like part of their like in a good way routine. Mm-hmm. So the Anglican service that is really the kind of your. I, I know you have some some things you like about that, so which is which is cool. You just explained them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so everything Dean just said. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I grew up Presbyterian, so like it was PCUSA, but thankfully the pastor who was there kind of when I was most formative was not on the kind of left hand side of of the denomination, so he was reading Keller and De Young and preaching those things, and that was uh, very informative and helpful informative in in my kind of I don't know I think it set me up for I don't know a, a view a just changing my view on baptism and being like okay cool yeah got it and, and and also like the the autonomy local church you know is very Baptist we'll talk about it in a sec but like but yeah but PCA Anglican those are good those are good yeah. that's good I stuff could, I'm gonna be uh controversial and say that if I was at a church that had you know like um I mean, obviously strong statement of beliefs and maybe like some creeds or, you know, like orthodox teaching uh, and really strong like network ties. I could be non-denominational. That would be like what I would add. I think there's I think there's enough out there in terms of like missions and some other things that you want to do um, that. I mean, I, we're a Southern Baptist church and, you know, obviously that's fantastic. So it's um, in terms of what we're able to accomplish through church planting and or take part in, I guess I should say, through church planting and mission. So I'm I'm, I'm not trying to say that that's a better option, but um, I would be like more hesitant to join a non-denominational church. Um, but, you know, with a with a laundry list of qualifications, I, I could I could do that, too. Are our networks like the. Um the contemporary service of like denominations, you know? So it was like, you know, it was like, Oh, we're not, we're not, we're not going to have a denomination. We're just going to be a network. And then it's like, you know, I don't know. It seems like the, like the, you know, the church that had a contemporary service, it's like, it's the same thing. It's just like spiced up a little bit, but yeah, I, I think know. a lot of people would probably say that. Yeah. Non, non-denom, like I have to be fair. Like if, if, if I knew that that church was like, here's the church planning agency we work with and here's the international ministry we work with and here's what we'd, yeah, I, I'd be a little more chill yeah. <laughs> about it. All right, um, that that was not very shallow. So it was l- not let's very shallow. let's make it shallow. <laughs> um, if you were starting a denomination and like theological orthodoxy aside, um, like that's a given. What are some requirements for a church joining your denomination, the denomination of Dean? So annual meetings would be in the mountains, and they wouldn't start till noon. <laughs> And there'd be a buffet. <laughs> so that, oh my that, gosh. That'd be, that'd be really important. <laughs> and uh, so that, that'd definitely be a thing. He's, he is Baptist. <laughs> yes, no, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> and I also uh, think that uh, everyone uh, would just be like not difficult. <laughs> like that'd be a rule. Like your interview process to be a part of the domination. Are you difficult? Now, granted, I'm very high maintenance. That's not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're two different things. <laughs> so, Thank you for Please define. Yes, yes. So difficult is just when everything has to be a thing. Never happy, never satisfied, always an issue, uh, always a what about, you know, always that you think you could do it better. A smartest person in the room syndrome that you always think you are, you know, th- th- those type of things. So I think it would be just like you, I think this is like just how sin clouds us all the time, but your sole purpose of this is like, what is the mission like that's why you're a part of this uh some more shallow things i think that uh we would um have all breakout meetings and any kind of committee meetings at starbucks uh, so that would be that would be really great uh and uh which would be interesting the north Carolina mountains i don't think they would like southern baptists very well in the land of paper straws and all that kind of stuff but uh so, oh plastic straws <laughs> would be required yeah, plastic straws are required <laughs> no required. sippy cup lids no sippy oh i hate the sippy cup lids uh and um i think that we would um end every um, night with a Cademan's Call reunion show. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that would be <laughs> what made it all. We're, I mean, we're sort of inching and, closer to that this year with Michael W. And, Smith at the uh, at the pastor's conference. <laughs> yeah, well, easy, easy. So, actually, here's what I appreciate about Michael Stoll, W. Smith, while you mentioned him. Somebody mentioned this the other day that, like, how many, like, former CCM artists have either, like, whatever it's called, deconstructed their faith, left the faith, now they're gay. I mean, like, whatever it might be. And he's, like... 
stayed faithful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that about him randomly. Uh, so um, also any disputes in the denomination, rather than going to a vote, would go outside for a home run derby. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that would be part <laughs> of it too. Yeah. So let's, let's just say my side is uh, going to be winning some uh, some conflicts. You win some debates. I drop some bombs. Um, Ashlyn, do you have any uh, any Man. particular shallow, uh, shallow requirements. requirements for my denomination? Uh, we would use the ESV translation of the Bible. Uh, that would be. Oh my god! <laughs> that I, would I have, be a non-negotiable. I have, I have one that I think you'll sign off. I feel on. so. I just feel like sledgehammered. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care. I mean, I care about the mountains. It's my but, denomination. But I think I think we'll both sign off on this one. It can only be at convention centers that have Coke products. A uh, hundred. Because for whatever reason, they all serve Pepsi. Yes. Which is the fault of our friend Philip Bethancourt. Demonic. We've always blamed and him. Demonic, Preferably, yes. Preferably, they wouldn't be at convention centers. They'd be at more inspiring, aesthetically pleasing uh, locations. But yes, uh, de- they you would have to serve Diet Coke there. Um, what else would I want in my denomination? Um, man, I'm like I'm I'm not doing very good right now. Like thinking about what would be. I mean, I think we would have like you know really great hookup on like books like we'd have a <laughs> we'd I know somehow that would be important <laughs> we'd have great great libraries maybe or bookstores um uh yeah, I'm, yeah good I think bookstore I'm, I think give, us a good, a, give us a good bookstore yeah, I'd have yeah. to think I have to th- I didn't think very well about this so I don't have much to add but Diet Coke and the ESV. I guess that's really all I need. <laughs> that's all I need. Our, our discipleship pastor just went to the Banner of Truth Banner Publisher Truth conference. conference in up in Pennsylvania, and he was sending me pictures from the bookstore, and it was like the greatest bookstore of all time. Yeah. Like, what is it about those kind of conferences that just do better books? Well, I mean, it was put on by a publisher. Yes, so but, I hope but, they have a good yeah, but like if Zondervan put on a conference, it wouldn't be as good as the. Not there are some good Zondervan books, but like, yeah. like everything. They say these pictures, I'm like, yes, I want that one. Yes, I want that one. It was just like everything in the entire store was incredible. All things that are out of print. Jacob, do you yeah. have any uh, any denominational requirements? Um, I can think of a couple. Um, the first would be everyone would have to use an Apple product. Oh, so that's your um, nice. so no streamline. no green text messages. No green text. Messages. Another Philip Bethancourt shout out. Our friend is <laughs> a pastor in Texas. <laughs> um, I would do a um, white sneaker rule, or if you're gonna have sneakers, have to be white. Whoa. Um, what about what if it's outside wow. of um, uh, Labor Day to Easter? Mm, I don't. I don't care. Oh, yeah. wow. white, sneakers white sneakers all the time. White sneakers all the time. I, I, I just strongly disagree. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, continue. That's, that's true. No, that's no, true leadership. There are yeah, no uh-huh. zip off cargo pants in Jacob's denomination. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> that is. Um, that's a denomination I want to be in. Yeah. yeah. No. No. <laughs> no cell phones on your beltway. On your. On your. You know. On your belt. <laughs> Um, and my last one would be there would be like architectural parameters. So like you know how like big chains have like McDonald's has like a design team who like designs all their like buildings. Mm-hmm. I would do the same thing. So all of our churches look not the same, but they would be like within the same aesthetic. Wow. Yep. I'm okay with that. That's kind of cool. I was gonna say yeah. I approve. So like yeah. you know you're in Jacob's denomination when you walk into the building. Exactly. Yep. I hope you know a lot of wealthy donors that can uh, make <laughs> yeah. all these church buildings happen. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there was a time where that was sort of maybe kind of true, but I don't know. Like, oh, well, like, like unofficially, English. yeah. Well, no, and like all like kind of eighties, nineties, like mega tr- Baptist mega churches sanctuaries, all they all look exact the same. same. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, um, that was fun and a little more shallow. So, thank you for uh, you know appeasing our listeners with that. Um, I, I gave a Starbucks, Cayman's call, a home run derby, and a buffet, and Ashley gave us a good bookstore. Just like that. Just yeah. Like that. Yeah. You serious business over across the table for me. I, I was going to say, you're high maintenance, not difficult. And Ashlyn's apparently simple and, and uh, <laughs> only needs a few things to be happy. Um, all right. Uh, anyways, so obviously this this episode will come out uh, a couple days ahead of the SBC's annual meeting. Uh, and so I think that maybe lends us to the first question. Like we said, we we want to be a part of a, denom- of a denomination. Uh, Dean, you mentioned that that allows us to, to partner with other churches and to do more together than we can apart. So why are we a part of the SBC? Well, it's interesting that Ashton brought up networks because technically, uh, technically using the right word, as you really dig into it, we are more of a network of churches than we are a denomination uh, because the denominations are also, are have a hierarchy, you know, they have like a home office. I mean, we have Nashville, but like there's, you know, there's bishops and they're oftentimes, or there's, 
you know, this chair of this and chair of that, 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 that had power, you know, over those churches. Anything from owning the property to placing pastors, all those kind of things. We don't have that. We have complete local church autonomy, which to me, that's wonderful because it allows you to, as a church, in that, that ecclesiology, like we as a church govern our own church, like we have elders, but it allows us to voluntarily be a part of something bigger than ourselves that can do much more than we can by ourselves. And so I think that's a great reason for being Southern Baptist is the autonomy that also brings with it a lot of complications because people still just don't quite understand, like when you try to communicate to the press and uh, different media members, like how our denomination works. And it's just not as simple as fix this, fix that. You know, with the hierarchy, it is that simple. You know, where you just tell the, the bishop or the overseer or, or whatever language people use, like, you know, make this rule, change this. And they can do it in like three seconds. It might cause controversy. They can do it in three seconds. Where we, ju- we just don't work that way. Like, it's just, it's impossible to do that in Southern Baptist life. Uh, but the reasons why I personally want us to be Southern Baptist and decided to be a Southern Baptist pastor uh, is a few things. One, the Baptist Faith of Message 2000, I think is a great document, of uh, a great statement of faith. And I think it is a uh, a big enough tent uh, to have orthodoxy and also uh, to not be so rigid that everyone has to like have the most like minute details of agreement <laughs> you know, in order to cooperate together. And then our, our then our cooperative efforts. I mean, what it looks like to plant churches together. I think IMB, there's a lot of things that are, that are a mess in the SBC right now, but I don't think IMB and NAM and our seminaries or any of this, you know, I think those are, that doesn't mean they're perfect, but they're all of good leadership. They are strong. They're making, they're really making disciples and going to the nations and training people and planting churches. They're actually doing things. And so that's, that's what allows me to, to stay a part of it are, are those things. So those are kind of my, my quick things of what I, what I appreciate and why. What was the question? Yeah, so sort of why are we a part of the SBC? Oh, yeah. And what are, maybe, maybe what are some of the advantages of, you know, cooperating together with churches around the world? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there definitely is power and momentum in combining resources. And, and, and that's financially, um, knowledge, practice, uh, just a lot of collaboration. I mean, I think even when we, when I think about our, missionaries and church planting partners who are in other places of the other places in the world um i see them gaining great traction in in collaboration with like-minded uh churches and, and brothers and sisters and so in that sense i think it's incredibly valuable to have that in the sbc um to dean's point because it's so large uh, and I mean, I think the SBC is made up of like 47,000 churches, I think, maybe even more. Um, I, I think, that's, along those I think that's somewhere in the ballpark. Um, it, it's just, I, that's where, you know, it just, that's so large. I mean, that's just a massive, um, that's just a massive denomination. So, but, I, but yes, I mean, I think to be able to uh, send missionaries through the IMB to be able to plant churches and, and just to have that support for new works. I think I see a lot of um, blessing there uh, to, to be able to start new works that by and large are are very well resourced by uh, people, by uh, money, you know, all the things that are necessary to, to go into um, starting, you know, churches and, and ministries from scratch. Uh, you have a lot of that available in the SBC. And that's, um, that's incredible. I mean, I have a lot of concerns, especially going into, um, this, this meeting, there's a lot of mess and a lot of discouragement just personally. I I don't think we can ignore that. Um, but, but we also, you know, can look at what is being done and celebrate that and, 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 and let that be the reason that, uh, it's worth, you know, digging into a lot of, um, the, the problems that, I mean, gosh, that's a the lightest way to say it, uh, the understatement of the century, um, the the horrors, you know, that that are happening in the SBC, um, and to say it is worth it because of all of these things that are happening, we owe it to people. So, um, yeah, I mean, we we've seen great uh, fruit coming from you know in in our church being able to participate in what we participate in, being resourced and equipped by uh, the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission as you know um, social culture continues to change, political culture. Uh, that's just an incredible thing too to know that there are people who are working day in and day out advocating for really important uh, causes that Christians care about that, that we're able to uh, be equipped and and taught to think you know in a Christian worldview about matters uh, that are, that are happening in our nation and, and so that's inc- an incredible asset as well. So there are so many reasons 
um, so many you know great things to to gain from um, being a part of the SBC in in those ways. Yeah, uh, I, I told our church at our membership meeting this past Sunday night. I said, look, I said, um, by ourselves, we could not afford, I don't know how it's even possible mm -hmm. to have three full-time families in three different continents, you know, on, on that are full-time missionaries mm -hmm. and have a church plant in London that we're fully behind, like, and be a partner of, of in, in playing churches in New Orleans. There's no way by ourselves as a church we could do that. I mean, the money, it's just not there. Yeah. So even though our folks are very generous, that, that's so much money. And that's what it takes. You know, money is mission ammunition <laughs> to go forward. So the SBC is more than, you know, just sharing resources, but it's not less than that. Yeah, and, and I think, Ashton, you're actually absolutely right about the issues, and issues, again, is an understatement. So when I think about that, that we have three missionaries in three different continents, including a church planning family in London, you know, my thought is then we have to clean this up. Mm -hmm. Like, it's too important to not clean up. You know, just for, this, for the sake of, of the mission on the field, for the sake of people who have been victims of, uh, and just for those listening that aren't, that aren't in the know, I mean, we, we have a a sexual abuse cover-up scandal that's happening right now in our denomination. And it's very serious. And I want to, anyone listening to this that is going to the convention uh, that's going to be there, uh, I would just make a call. I'm, I'm just a guy in Tallahassee. I don't have any power, any authority. I'm just a guy making a plea to other people is when that opportunity comes uh, to vote for a third-party investigation of our executive committee and how they have handled the things that Russell Moore uh, uh, accused in his a letter mm -hmm. about what, how they handle things that every single person in that convention hall needs to vote in favor. If that's even how the polity works, I'm not exactly sure all that's going to go down, but needs to vote in favor of a third party investigation. Because if, if, if you're against it, my question is, what do you have to hide? Mm -hmm. It's like if, if someone ever says, I don't want to be audited, you, you know, you have to always go, why is that? <laughs> you yeah. know, like what's going on here? Uh, to me that that's critical, critical. And I mean, I, I think of, um, people that I just really trust and really believe who have shared stories and shared experiences, uh, both men and women, uh, some who were in the room trying to deal with the aftermath, others who like were directly, like personally uh, victims uh, of, of some of the things that took place mm -hmm. and the people that I really do trust and believe. And we have to, we have to figure this out and we have to and, and move forward. I don't, I don't mean move forward as in move on. I, I mean, because I don't think you ever move on from something like this. I think you work through it but must move forward in terms of who we're going to be, um, if we're going to be trusted or not, to be the people that have the keys to go to the nations through our churches. Um, and it, it's really serious. So I just want to just really charge every single person that's going to be in Nashville to say, look, we're going to do this. I'm not saying that's going to end all of our problems, but, man, that's a big step in the right direction mm -hmm. is to see what was really going on and then deal with it accordingly. Yeah, you can't deal with something you don't know about. It's, yeah, it's, it's a serious. It's, it's very to, serious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's obviously one of a, a huge disadvantage, you know, in a sense to being tied to maybe, uh, you know, to, uh, to a convention. What are some of the other challenges and things that, I mean, that's a huge one. I, I don't even know how to kind of move on from that, but what are the other challenges that, that sit before the convention and what are ways, um, for us to, to work and move forward, uh, together in these, in these areas? One of the problems that I see, or challenge, I mean, challenge, problem, whatever you want to call it, is that while, yes, it's, um, you know, we're, we're all aligned through the Baptist faith and message and, and a stated desire to cooperate, I also see a lot of people in the SBC who really are not like-minded in terms of how you do church. And so I, I, I sort of perceive... Um, you know, on the one hand, we have local church autonomy and that's great and celebrated. But when it comes down to, you know, allocate, allocating resources or um, deciding how people are going to work together in different ways, that can be a challenge when at the end of the day you realize, wow, in, in our being autonomous, we have developed really different practical ways of doing church. And, and so that's something that I think can be a challenge. Um, and some of that I think is pride and ego of other things I think are true convictions and, and that's okay. And so it just, um, I, I think it's important to have conversations, um, you know, whether it's deciding to, uh, you know, plant a church or to associate with, you know, because even within the SBC, you could associate in, in sort of subgroups with other like-minded churches to do different things. Um, and, and some churches are a part of other networks as well. Um, and so yeah, whether it's planting a church or, um, you know, merging churches or, you know, any, any type of collaboration 
um, churches coming together, I think there just has to be honest conversation about, hey, is this something where it's good for us to work together or not? And know that that's okay um, if, if not. Um, but it frustrates me when I see, you know, and I, I probably think about this more at the state level, honestly, but it frustrates me when I, you know, see or, or hear about things where, you know, we're, and I don't, I can't, I'm, I genuinely cannot think of an example that comes to my mind um, in, in like recent history. And part of that is just because with COVID, it, a lot of things have been slowed down, um, but withholding resources or just not helping churches move forward with good works, you know, because of differences over, um, you know, second and third, third tier type issues or praxis issues um, that like that frustrates me. So I think that and I, I think that's a real challenge of saying uh, you can, you know, all be together and but have local church autonomy. You know, it, you're aligned, but then in a lot of ways you have so much freedom that you're bound to have disagreements or, or conflicts on things. And so um, that just can, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's, you know, a, a selling point or a mark against, you know, the way the SBC operates. I'm just saying that's a reality uh, when you're trying to do uh, something as big as global church planting, you know, um, and, and that can be, you know, that can be kind of discouraging, I think. Yeah, I, that's, that was going to be, I was, that was going to be kind of my example I gave too, like the kind of the, the main theme of what you said. Like it really can be frustrating. Mm-hmm. Like it, it can be really difficult uh, because it's really, I guess this is just where you have to really just f- figure out what's important in your mind because cooperating with churches that I would never go to in a million years <laughs> you know, or, or one of the leadership or authority of that pastor, that's hard. You know, and that's not a thing. And, and again, in the same way, there's people that would never, go, the SBC would never go to a church around the pastor. And I get that too. So I'm not trying to say that I'm the one that's right and they're wrong. Right. Uh, of course I'm right and they're wrong, but you know, <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, and that, uh, but you know, I, that's that's really complicated. So I, I think, and there's also things that are real convictional things, like Ashlyn said too, that aren't just like preferences or, but like what what's important, like what really matters, or how much can I tolerate? Mm. And so the the question there is, and what do you do with that? Like like what what's the solution there? And I, this probably sounds a little, I don't know, a little clickish, maybe I, I don't know, but I think it's something that large. It's kind of like a church in, in a large church you need to find like your pocket, like your pocket of people, your pocket of, uh, you know, a way for you to be involved. The language we use a lot is where big church can become small. Mm-hmm. So I think in the SBC, while, you know, we do need to care about all the things that are happening, I, I think churches need to find kind of their other like-minded churches where they can go, okay, all that over there is, is, is not for me. I actually have major issues with it to the point where convictionally, I don't want that person leading. I don't want to be a part of something that has this person as a committee or a president or, you know, all those kind of things. But you know what? I do love these other 10 churches that are my friends and I believe in them. And, and, and so we're going to make our cooperation like, like big picture cooperation. We're going to, is, is the nations. In the meantime, small picture kind of cooperation is the relationships, right? And so that's kind of what keeps outside of the big picture. What keeps me going is the, is our missionaries and church planters and our seminaries. Um, and small picture, which keeps me going is like the people out there that I know are the real deal, you know, and that I trust and I believe in and are doing things the right way. You know I mean? Like your, you know, your, your Peyton Hill kind of people at first Baptist church of Prattville, Alabama. I mean like the, those kind of people, you know, that, that keep, and, and like, and, and like for, and also like, like JD, you know, mm-hmm. summit and, and like people that are, that really are the real deal. Jimmy Scroggins down in West Palm beach. And you know, these people that are really, you know, they're the real, the Brad Luter in Fort Smith, Arkansas guys that are there that love the Lord, love the church, love cooperation and have no time for all this junk that happens. So, um, that, that's kind of what keeps me. Yeah. So one of the things that I think could be helpful to, to talk about is really what is the annual meeting? What takes place there? How does, um, us going and participating and staying a part of it, um, and, and, you know, allow us to, try and influence some of, uh, these things for change. You know, I mean, you know, Dean, you kind of talk about there, there's that ability to say, I don't really want to be a part of any of that, but I also don't want these people to be in, in power and to, to have influence and to, you know, when it comes time to vote on an investigation or, um, any of those things, like how, how does, like, I mean, we've sort of said, you know, it's, it's worth it from a cooperation international missionary standpoint, but what happens at that meeting and how does that actually help, guide and shape the direction of of the convention so that we can hopefully see some of these things changed so that we can send more missionaries plant more churches train more pastors 
Well, we have someone in this podcast who has been a vice chair of the committee on nominations and uh, committee on committees. Committee on yeah. committees. Excuse me, even even bigger than that. That's right. Sorry, I, I, I understood you kidding. there. <laughs> and also, is going to be a parliamentarian for the, at the SBC. For the one point three people who have heard of the committee, <laughs> and also the fact that there is a committee on committees, <laughs> which does which does have a big impact. It does. Yeah. Which is a funny name. So so that's a, so Ashley, can you kind of expl- I mean, I think explaining something like that is a good explanation of what happens at the annual meeting. Yeah, I mean the annual meeting. Um, it, I mean, it's it's a lot, but it's a business meeting, you know, of, uh, you know, electing officers within the SBC, putting forth resolutions uh, that, you know, in short, uh, the best way I could explain it, just, you know, impact the way that the SBC as a convention operates and that, you know, affects uh, ministry, um, th- you know, some of the beliefs and convictions that we reflect as a convention, like those kinds of things. I'm sure someone could explain this like way better than I am but but so there's a business meeting that happens there's also like extra things you know on the front end there's like a kind of micro conference about uh, sending and missions or you know it's been the pastor's conference in the past with different people preaching there's you know there's social time there's a million like if you want to go on to the SBC just google SBC annual meeting uh, and you'll see that there's a million different events taking place, you know, all the way from like state convention events to, you know, women's gatherings, men's gatherings, like blah, blah, blah. I could go on and on. So there's tons of different things to be a part of like that. Um, but, you know, on Tuesday and Wednesday, there's um, there's election of officers. So the SBC president, um, the, the different committees that do take place. So um, the committee on committees gathers together to. Uh, nominate the the committee on nominations which then nominates trustees for the entities did I get that right yes which is a big deal yes, that the trustee part is, is yes big deal, and yeah. entities would be the seminaries NAM IMB uh, ERLC Guide, Guidestone. Guidestone like the kind of different organizations if you will the different arms of um, the of the SBC um, so that, I mean, there's like um, way more. I mean, there's a there's a committee on order of business that kind of provides the like backbone and the structure and the ongoings of the business meeting. Um, there's the committee on resolutions, uh, I believe, that, you know, kind of manages all. So there's time where people can come um, and submit resolutions to then be, uh, you know, heard from the floor, like explained. Uh, you can ask questions. And then those are either, you know, accepted or not if it's like something dumb. Um but, you know, so resolution. So, I mean, if you think about, like, a business meeting that follows Robert's Rules of Order, like, there's a lot of that um, that goes on. But those things are important because they do impact who is in leadership, what kinds of things the SBC is thinking about and working on and representing, uh, you know, as a large Protestant denomination. And, uh, oh gosh, what else am I missing? What role does the president have in any of those kind of committees, the way that order of business, all those kind of things, the, the, the voice of the convention, I think maybe could be helpful to talk about as well. Yeah. I mean, I, just what you said, I mean, definitely the voice of the convention providing leadership, uh, throughout, uh, the proceedings, um, be, you know, because the committees are there, the president is single-handedly like just appointing every person into leadership, if that makes sense. So, um, but, but he does provide, you know, leadership over that whole process, um, and works with the committees. So, um, I mean, the, the president obviously is incredibly important. I mean, he's the face and, and the representative of the convention uh, to, you know, I would say like culture and the, the world at large, I guess, and advocating for the different uh, works of the SBC. Um, and what else would you add? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, because why we care about who wins president is that person is going to be appointing the chairs, you know, like your position you had with you that you with yeah, you sorry, and, I love that. with, with that you with now. you and Sky Pratt when you did, did a committee on committees that was appointed by JD, you know, so so that's that's a big deal. So who do we want appointing, you know, nominations? We want Ashlyn and Sky Pratt doing that. <laughs> you know, we don't want someone that has some kind of a, like a different agenda than let's get the best people for the nations on there to to make that have integrity and character and. You know, they're big tent thinking and, you know, love our cooperation. You know, that, that's who we want on there. You know, so that, that's why it matters a lot. And then they also represent. So let's think about Tallahassee, for example, like City Church. And then less than a mile down the road is Fellowship Baptist. Two very different churches and how we look, feel, what we talk about, emphasize all those things. But what cooperates us, brings us together is we support our cooperative work as Southern Baptists for around the country. 
So the, so the uh, president of the SBC is voted on by the messengers of Fellowship Baptist Church in City Church in, Tallah- in City Church Tallahassee, and then represents us, you know, and who those people are going to be, and 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 taking good care of our of being good stewards of our cooperation cooperative efforts. So it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. So um, obviously, you know, those votes matter. Being in the room matter. We we have a desire to send messengers to 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 vote to hopefully help shape and guide you know the the way that the leadership uh, structure pans out, so that we can see the denomination move forward. And as we've mentioned, there are you know, a lot of kind of contentious issues and, and big problems to deal with. Um, but uh, there are things, Ashwin, I think earlier you said, like there are things that we can celebrate as well. Um, what what has you most encouraged uh, about the state of the SBC now? And I, in some ways it feels weird to celebrate that given that there is so much junk. I'm not trying to make light of that, but what, what, what get like what provides fuel that makes you go yeah this is worth it like this is still like they're still good coming the lord is still at work using you know this denomination to cooperate together to move forward to advance the gospel uh kevin ezel and sends red dots tweets they do <laughs> <laughs> that are just amazing that show like how much progress has been made in cities through church planting you know where before we started the send vision there was like one zero two and now there's you know, there front dots everywhere you know i think that's, there's 8200 churches planted since 2010 that incredible SBC churches yeah, through the north american mission board that's amazing you know and the fact that you know jen and craig stewart just learned german <laughs> you know in berlin and they're getting ready to go make an impact in that city for christ you know i mean just this thing such as that 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 what 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 uh what cam and sophie are doing over in thailand you know what sarah and reed are doing you know over in africa i mean like it, to me that's that really is it and also to see like what what's coming out of our seminaries, you know, and like what what's being graduated, like or what kind of people are, are coming out of our seminaries now in terms of certain things have been cleaned up and new leadership and those type of things. So, uh, the the presidents of our seminaries right now, I, I think, are, are all people of integrity and character, and uh, and who get it and have had to do some work to clean up some junk at some of the seminaries, and uh, that that matters a lot to me. So those are the things that get me excited, and, you know, and the people that just relationships, people we know. Like the people that we have relationships with, they're leading churches and working into the heads that we know, hey, you know what? These people are the real deal. And there's a lot of people that aren't the real deal. <laughs> you know, that's, clear, that's clearly a thing. But the ones we know are the real deal. That's what gets me get kind of excited about it all. Yeah, I mean, in terms of ministry momentum, definitely looking at the IMB as we continue to send missionaries and have um, new initiatives for reaching the nations. Um, I was just reading the, <clears throat> the other day about uh, how they've uh, reconfigured some different regions to uh, focus more on uh, the, you know, like South Asia and the Pacific Islands. And, and so just being able to think about these remote places across the world where um, people are devoting, you know, their their days and their lives to uh, to trying to get the gospel there. That's incredibly, I mean, that's, that's a vision worth, you know, pour, pouring all of our uh, resources and, and our energy into and so that's incredibly exciting definitely echoing uh, church planting I've I have been it's there's a long way to go but I've been excited to see um, movements towards uh, diversity within the SBC Um, again so so much more to do but just to see um, different emphases on uh, church planting uh, in ethnically diverse neighborhoods and communities um, to see uh, you know steps towards more diverse leadership even as I was thinking about uh, you know committee work over the last couple of years to see uh, more women represented, more people of color, um, e- even like age and and geographically, you know, spread across the country, like just to know that it's important to have people who do represent all of the different types of churches that are in the SVC. That's important. And so, um, you know, intentional steps toward that. And then what gives me um, hope and comfort, maybe, I guess, um, and, and I don't mean this as a, a like the spiritual answer, but just that like God is going to have his way, you know, with yeah. with the SBC. Well said. Um, and and I, I think that gives me I think that should, you know, put the fear of God in us. But it but it gives me, you know, hope and, and confidence that um, none of what is happening in the SBC is because of um, human, you know, talent or ability. It's it's all because of God working through people as he wills. And so just. Like truly, uh, if you know, if we are able to submit ourselves to to His will, um, you know, if we can really say that will be done, whatever that means, whatever the cost, you know, we talk a lot about 
uh, you know, sending missionaries who, you know, we we honor rightly so for, you know, for dying for their faith. And I think it can be easy in the comfort of where we are in, in America with tons of resources and, um, you know, just generally like comfortable lives not to want to die to self in a lot of ways. And I think we have seen where that's gotten us and in some problematic ways in the SBC. So all of that to say, I am encouraged to know that um, the, the Lord is going to have his way and, and whatever that means is, is what will be. Um, but just to, you know, in the meantime, uh, and, you know, and it's difficult, but in the meantime to continue to cultivate relationships with um, friends who are, you know, on the front lines of ministry and uh, truly desire to see, um, you know, God glorified in, in our churches here and around the world. Uh, those are all things to be grateful for. Well said. Yeah. And I, you know, and we're not like Ashlyn said, there's real, there's real issues, you know, the diversity conversation. I'm, I'm thankful that that's being addressed by some, some, not enough people, but, but, um, but some people, you know, we're seeing progress made. One of the best kept secrets going, I think in all of SBC life is the Florida Baptist convention with Haitian churches. Mm-hmm. We have a large Haitian population in Florida. Uh, that's not going to show up on social media, you know, and, and, you know, and, and get encouraged, but it's really hot. Ha- the amount of Haitian congregations that we have now, I mean, I, I know Tommy Green, our executive director here, has put a great time and, and resources into that. Uh, that. That excites me. Why? Because that's who lives here, mm-hmm. right? That's who's, There's part, parts of Florida, that's a heavy population, right? Our Hispanic congregations we're seeing happen in Florida. That's who lives here, right? So we're seeing efforts towards reaching people that live here, right? Like that is our mission field, uh, not having churches that don't look like our mission field and efforts that don't look like our mission field. Uh, so I, that's, I'm really encouraged by that. You know, there's some things I'm really, really troubled about. A lot of the rhetoric people have used, um, just how people, I think like Beth Moore, that made news, you know, that was, on, that was secular news that made about her leaving the SBC. You know, I had conversations with her about it. Uh, it was, you know, directly about how she was treated, about how men spoke to her, about a lot of the, um, the politics and how uh, being like the Trumpism became like almost like religion and almost a litmus test for someone's cooperation, which is awful. Uh, but it couldn't just be left at that as bad as that is. It had to become like this, you know, cutthroat kind of, I mean, things that people said to her. I mean, man, that's what makes it hard. It's like, what do you do with those people? You know, I, I, and who are they sometimes too? It's like, is it, and because it's one of the hardest questions to answer is, well, what is the SBC? Well, people would say the headquarters of the SBC is the local churches. That's true. Functionally, it doesn't feel like that a lot of times. You know, it feels like it is a hierarchy, even though we don't technically have one. It feels like that's what it is. But when someone says the SBC and the SBC, like on social media, it's like, are you referring to like the the senior adult Sunday school class at Bradfordville Baptist? Are, are, are you referring to the person at First Baptist Tallahassee who's been teaching RAs and GAs for 40 years? Like, are, are, are who are you referring to? You know, like, are, are you referring to... Like who who do you are, are you referring to the crazy Trump person on social media that you know like like who who do you mean by the SBC and that's and that can be complicated sometimes because there are so many answers to who is the SBC it really is that broad so I think we need to be unafraid to call a spade a spade you know where there are real real areas that that need to be not just addressed but completely repented over made over everything and also like to have hope in the positive things that happen. Because in this fallen world, this cooperative effort is one of the best shots we have, you know, to, to go and, and to reach people for Christ. And also to be humble enough. Like, I just want to talk about the Lord's hand in this. God doesn't need the SBC. Are you kidding? You know, and, and I get made the case of it's worth cooperating over our missional efforts. But we're not the only people. We're not the only Christians in the world who have missional efforts. <laughs> we're not the only denomination in America that's planting churches. You know, like we're, you know, so just to have that kind of humility going, hey, look, like God's not going to be mocked and he's not going to put this junk. And it's his mercy and grace. He hasn't blown this thing up already because of all the flaws over the years, even way before my time. You know, when you look back to the civil rights era and you even go back further than that to slavery. I mean, yeah, you had Baptists that were, you know, that were, you know, calling a spade a spade, but you had way more in the, in the segregated South churches that were aiding it, that were owned. I mean, that's just a whole other conversation for a whole other time. There's a dark stain over generations. Uh, and I think that this generation coming up, that's coming out of seminary especially, I have a lot of hope for them because I think that they're done with all of that and and they want to be known for the gospel and the local church and the mission field and not for politics, backroom deals, shady business, misogyny, racism, you know, cover ups, all those kind of things. And I'm not trying to say that our forefathers are known for those things. I'm trying to say there's far more too much of that that's been allowed to happen under watch. 
and it's time that something finally gets done. Yeah, well said. Uh, so encourage you to, to pray uh, this week for that gathering, for uh, the churches who are there, for the Lord's will to be done, and uh, for uh, you know God to receive the glory that he's due through uh, this convention. Uh, feels like a weird place to uh, transition, but we're going to do that real quick to the local on tap. Also happening this week is the end of school for Leon County, and so summer... You know, if if it's Memorial Day, if it's the end of school, whatever it is, it's fully upon us. It is here, and uh, the weather indicates that as well in Tallahassee. How do you survive the summer in Tallahassee? How do I survive personally? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't or, sure or if that others, was like a collective you know. <laughs> eye, like I'm supposed to give advice to people. Yes, um, both, all of the above. I would say, like... Obviously, within reason, I am just someone who like does not sweat the two degrees on my utility but on my thermostat. Like if you want to just be a happy person, just like commit now that like the fifty dollars you're going to save or spend is worth it. Crank like, it down. Yeah. Like just <laughs> it's hot outside. It makes everybody angry. You get in your car and it's like a hot box. Like just cool your house and just be a happy person. Four areas. I said never be cheap. Tipping a waitress. Steak toilet paper and the ac bill so absolutely 100 percent agree with that and, and the lawn man oh lawn man I, I chris i told chris when we first got married i said just you need to know no matter where we are in our lives no matter what's happening financially whatever place we're at we'll always have a lawn man and it's just been known so yes uh but um that goes back to the summer thing uh stay inside <laughs> so uh, i uh if you go for walks i like to do walks and things like that i do walks it i'm not like a really early morning walk person uh, but I'll do them like at 7.30 or, you know, something like that when it's like it's still hot, but like it's cooler than it was before. Like just kind of be selective on your times of day, have friends with pools, <laughs> you know, that, 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 that kind of stuff. And, and uh, it's it's not the, it's a wonderful place to live. Summer is not an amazing time to live here, in my opinion. Uh, the rest of the season, the rest of the year, absolutely. But it can be a little tough. So I also, as someone who gets like, the like the dog days of summer like I can just become like despondent in the summer like sometimes you have to like treat yourself like a kid where it's like you know how parents are like okay we're armed with like activities every single week that's right. like that's you can do that as an adult too yeah. like just plan out your your season and say like here are some things that I'm gonna do you know you can't always put yourself in a summer camp I would if I could personally um but yeah there's you a market can, for that adult yeah. summer camp hey listen I'm museum I, camps yeah, that museum is camps. my dream. Um, but yeah, I think keep yourself busy. That's there's there's not an it. adult week at the Florida Archives. <laughs> <laughs> if there is someone, please let me know because I'll be there. And I, I would definitely recommend a like at least at one point to do a full fledged jump off the high dive at Wakulla Springs in the yes. middle of July and just be like really cold in that water. And then as soon as I land, you know me, I get anxious about things. I'm like, the just fastest just... swim because of alligators you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> they're like, oh, they're just right over there. And then there's no net. There's no, no, it's like, no, it's, it's cool. They're on the other side of the rope. <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> don't, oh. don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say the beach. Like, it, it makes being hot as rump more bearable in my mind. Um, like, cause, <laughs> I think the beach in the summer is the worst <laughs> thing in the history of mankind. Well, you, I mean, but you kind of think the beach is not great anyway. Like yeah, there's like sand and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, go to the beach. It's close. You can do it in a day um, and stay inside because it's hot and avoid the mosquitoes. But anyways, I uh, hope this was an enlightening conversation on the SBC. Lots to be uh, encouraged by, lots to be troubled by, and uh, pray that the Lord's will would be done there. And we hope to see you next week as we jump back in to the doctrines of grace. Take care. Have a great week. Thanks for listening to The Local Dive, a podcast diving into deep and shallow musings about Christ, the church, and culture. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. You can follow The Local Dive on social media and continue the conversation with us on Instagram and Twitter at The Local Dive Pod. Thank you.